Well, good evening. Uh, I wanted to give you a quick look at uh, a piece of kit that uh, I got in uh, because I needed to um, wanted to get a few mechanicals uh, from it and then to check uh, some componentry that matched uh, some stuff that I had repaired in my 8902A measuring receiver. When this piece of kit is the 8901B modulation analyzer. Basically, this is a, a tool that enables me to measure uh, RF signals and to get uh, analysis of their modulation and power level and, uh, and so on. So what I wanted to do was to take you through some of the things that you can achieve with this unit and then we'll have a look at the actual uh, uh, layout of some of the componentry uh, on it. Uh, I'm not going to keep this unit because it basically is uh, just a less functional version of the 8902A that I already have. Um, so once I get this done, I'll run it through its calibration process and then we'll uh, uh, put it on uh, eBay and uh, send it off to a good home uh, at uh, a cheap price because I really just want to recover a little bit of the money that I spent on it uh, to get the parts that I, I needed for my 8902A and it wouldn't be uh, right to really sell it as a, as a, a great unit because I've swapped in some not so great mechanicals on it. Anyway. The basic idea behind uh, this is that you have the ability to do a, a bunch of uh, different analysis. I can get frequency, power, I can look at the different types of modulation or amplitude, frequency and phase modulation. And then I can do some additional um, uh, analysis of those uh, actions through things like audio frequency uh, and so on. I have the ability with uh, this port over here to actually drop in an 8400 uh, series sensor and then I can actually use this very similar to uh, one of the, the four three series uh, power meters. Uh, in fact, uh, what you can do is actually plug in the exact same uh, power, exact same sensor module, which is the HP 11722A uh, into this device and then do a bunch of the same power measurements that you could do with the 8902A. So let's have a look. First one here we have is frequency. Now the frequency uh, is great. I can go in here and I can set my frequency to 50 meg and we'll track the, the stuff. Now it's uh, this just has the standard uh, time base in it so you'll get some difference. And it hasn't really warmed up so I don't really know how accurate the, the time base is. And I haven't done any of the adjustments on it. So forgive me to have a little bit uh, of stuff off there. So. These uh, units can tell me this, but one of the, the great things they can do is they have an ability to pick a signal out of a noisy environment or to track a signal and give me some information about it. So let me set my signal back to 100 megahertz. And what I'm going to go do is I'm going to type in 100 megahertz. And now I've manually tuned, and you would have noticed the auto-tuning light's gone off. I've manually tuned it to uh, that frequency. And so if I step my uh, if I step my um, unit down you'll see I start getting errors saying that it can't uh, track the, the the signal but what I can do is I can now go in and say well give me the frequency error and what the signal what the system will do now is it will enable me to say step it down by megahertz and it'll tell me that the error between the frequency that I'm supposed to be uh, achieving and what I'm actually reading uh, is. And it's great if you're trying to get uh, uh, radios to work and you're tuning up the, the radio circuits because now you know you can set your radio and say I want it at one megahertz and then you can measure this and then see how far off that is while you uh, tune that in. What I can uh, do is also just uh, go back and set it to uh, standard automatic mode. Oh. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like uh, uh, we have a little problem with uh, the unit. Uh, well, I don't know what was going on there, a little momentary weirdness. Uh, I am going to put all of this uh, information in my uh, eBay ad so that uh, people know um, that uh, this will probably require a little bit of uh, TLC when they get it. Anyway. You saw that uh, you know I can get uh, frequency figures. What I can also uh, do is look at modulation. So 
let me set uh, mod AM modulation on my signal and you can see it doesn't affect the frequency but if I come and hit uh, the AM uh, 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 button now you can see I'm reading what the amount of amplitude modulation that I've applied and so I can scroll in say like 40 percent modulation and it will show me that uh, uh, that modulation percentage there what I can also do is go and have a look at the frequency that uh, you've putting on to modulate. Now typically um, when you're testing out this RF gear you'll use a 400 Hertz or a 1 kilohertz signal and that just tends to be the the, the standard that uh, that goes on and I'm sure the the ham uh, radio guys could tell you why that is but what I can do is hit the little gold key and go and say tell me what the audio frequency is and what I have is the ability to set 400 meg, uh, 400 uh, Hertz on my uh, signal generator, you'll see it drop down. Now, what I can also now do is go measure the distortion on that, because you know this is a constant tone, so I want to be able to see whether the radio transceiver that I would be testing or the piece of gear I'd be testing is distorting the signal that it's sending. So I can go and have a look at the actual distortion. Now you'll notice that I get a hundred percent distortion, and the reason is is that we have those two signals of one kilohertz and four hundred hertz. If I go back and select uh, 1 kilohertz over here, you'll see that it's only reading a, a 0.67 uh, distortion. Now, I actually haven't done a calibration in uh, quite, quite some time on the 8657B here. So I don't know, and this is clearly not calibrated, so we're somewhere in that vicinity. But if I come back to 400 hertz, you'll see I get that. Now I can come in and go, uh, give me, oop, sorry, give me 400 hertz. And you can see that now it's come in and the enunciator's come up saying 400 hertz. So that's giving me a way to see what the, uh, 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 the modulation uh, is there. Now, I can come in and do the same thing and go uh, with frequency modulation. And if I hit uh, FM, you'll see that I'm modulating by 20 uh, kilohertz there. I can step that up to say 30, we'll see that, uh, that value. Now, what I can do is I can see how the modulation is going between the, the max your know, modulation I can push them together and say give me the average between the two of the different peaks I could say give me the average and it will actually work out what the average modulation is going to be and I can also say I want peak and then I want you to hold the peak and so what it's going to do is go look for the highest thing so if I turn that up to 40 it will go to 40 and then I can turn that down to uh, to 20 you know and it will still hold the maximum that I had so if I had my uh, signal go back forwards and well, I didn't uh, I didn't set that properly let's go down to 20 anyway so that's some of the the, the frequency stuff here what I can also do is apply a bunch of filters and what I can uh, do is measure RF power. Now, I'm not going to plug in my, uh, uh, my sensor here. I'm just going to actually just hit the power button. And now what we're doing is an uncalibrated, untuned uh, uh, power analysis. Now, let me turn off the uh, modulation here. And what you're seeing is it's reading about minus 9.6 dB. I have my signal generator set for 0 dB. Uh, and the 316 cable that I, I'm using has about, I think, a 0.7 dB per meter, and I've got two of those connected. So we're roughly in the ballpark. And if I step it, if I step my amplitude down to say minus 10 dB, we'll see that the, the system drops to, down to minus 10 dB. Now I can go and calibrate uh, that through this uh, unit over here. And this is very similar to the 4.3 uh, series. Uh, oh, in fact, any of the power meters. This is a, a 1 milliwatt, 0 dBm, uh, 50 megahertz power reference. And so it's designed to be used with... Uh, oh, there's my alarm system seeing, you know, probably dogs outside. It's been designed to be used with uh, that 8400 series sensor. Let me go check and see what the, is going on. Right, I think the doggies have uh, finished expressing displeasure. So, what, uh, now they've come in and decided they want uh, some attention so the camera could get hit at any point in time. Uh, 
So where was it? So that you know, gives you a way of going and measuring uh, some power uh, direct while you're doing your actual modulation uh, uh, analysis at the same time. So there's a bunch more uh, functionality in here. I'm not going to go through all of it. They're the major things that you can do uh, uh, with the unit. Let's take a, a look uh, inside now. Okay, let's see how we go with uh, this camera angle, uh, moving the unit around a bit. Uh, what we have here is basically the, the unit has uh, four primary sections. Uh, the first section is the, the digital section that has uh, uh, the controller board uh, and the counter in it. The, the second is the, uh, uh, what they refer to as the audio uh, section and this is where uh, we go through and look at all the modulation information and uh, all of the uh, distortion analysis and so on. Then down the back here uh, what we have is uh, what is the, the RF section and this is where the signal basically comes into this board and that starts the whole chain uh, of items that come through uh, and then eventually end up uh, coming into the controller board and over here that to be displayed on the, the front system. And then over here we have the, the power supply um, and you can notice that there's a little uh, green light. So the power supply in these devices is always live. Um, and the reason they did that was that, uh, I think, was that uh, a lot of them were ordered. They have a uh, sitting in here, and this is arguably why they have this uh, plastic shield, but sitting in here would be a high stability time base. And so by having the power supply on all the time, you would uh, be able to keep the oven warm. Um, this construction model uh, is used in both this and the 8902A uh, and each of these little sections is basically a shielded can with a motherboard underneath it and you slide that uh, uh, item in there and uh, then you can screw down the, the cans and they've got a bunch of uh, spots for you to go and uh, uh, do adjustments and so on and eventually when I run this through the calibration hopefully um, I'll be able to, to do that and then do those adjustments and get this thing uh, uh, working uh, before we uh, before I get rid of it. Anyway, that's the sort of the, the basic layout. Uh, let's just take a look at one of the, the cards so you can see sort of the era. This is the controller card. Um, and so what you've got here is a classic uh, uh, 70s sort of layout of the, the units. I believe these were made in the 70s. Um, you know, you have this horizontal and vertical sort of uh, arrangement uh, of things uh, all through hole um, you have uh, these are the ROMs for the controllers you have the controller chips here the battery backup for the NRAM uh, the NVRAM and uh, you know a bunch of test points to enable you to go and test and, and uh, service these things so that's a quick look at uh, oh, let me see can I get that back in that's a quick look at uh, an 89 01B uh, modulation analyzer. Uh, I hope you found it interesting and uh, I'll catch you again later.